Hello guys, today our topic is the body bias control which was done by Andreas Pfadler and your presenter Mohammed Al Mashahidi. Maybe you are a fan of watching movies, playing games, or maybe just texting your friend on your portable device. Considering this, you need it to operate in different performances and rates of speed. But your concern mostly is the battery life and charging. There is always this relation between your device performance and the power consumption. But what is the real story behind this? Well, while your device is nothing but a huge number of processors, ICs, RAMs, and gates, which all are consist of millions or maybe a billions of transistors nowadays, here is the, the link actually. And here we can control and balance between the speed rate and the power consumption. What kind of power we are talking about? First, the dynamic power, which caused usually during the switching either while charging or discharging or when both transistors are barely in a short circuit. What about the static power? In this presentation, we are going to focus on the static power consumption, how it can be changed by varying the threshold voltage using the body bias effect. We can classify the static leakage as sub-threshold leakage and gate leakage and some others like junction and contention leakage as you can see in the equation but let's concentrate on the sub-threshold leakage as it is usually the dominant source of static power we know that threshold voltage depends on substrate voltage as it is obviously shown in the equation here knowing that the surface potential and the body effect coefficient are usually fixed for each transistor the only thing here we can variate is the substrate voltage. Now, subthreshold leakage current flows when a transistor is supposed to be off. And given the equation in that case, where I off is the subthreshold current at VGS0 and VDS equal to VDD, and knowing that the other parameters in this equation are constants, we can simplify it. To be as we can see here, showing that the substrate voltage is the only variable that we can change it beside VDD. And according to that, we can now manipulate the supply voltage or applying a body voltage to further decrease the leakage and improve the speed rate. But how? Well, buckle up guys, we are taking you deeply inside your devices to see what effects a variable threshold voltage have on the circuit. When we want to talk about body bias effect on a transistor, we should mention two different cases. The first is when the transistor is idle, a reverse body bias may be applied increasing the threshold voltage, which will decrease the saturation current, then increasing the delay leading to decreasing the maximum frequency. And from this simplified equation, we can figure that the leakage current is decreased and of course static power consumption too. The second is when it is in active mode. A forward body bias is applied to reduce the threshold voltage of the device, increasing the leakage current and the static power. The performance will be better as the saturation current is increasing reducing the delay, increasing the maximum frequency. But there is a kind of trade-off when forward body bias is applied. We can reduce the supply voltage, which will decrease the dynamic power, which gives sort of a balance between the increment of static power and the decrement of the dynamic power consumption in total. Now you can see how your device circuit balance between your different usages and we will see that in our example later. But before that, let's talk about another technique used when the transistor is in idle mode, called the power gating. What is power gating? In a brief, it is the easiest way to reduce the static current during sleep mode. It is to turn off power supply to the sleeping block as shown in the figure. The logical block receives its power from a virtual supply voltage. How it works? Well, when the transistor is in sleep mode, the header switch turns off, allowing the virtual supply voltage to float and gradually sink to zero. And when it goes active, the header switch transistors are on, connecting the virtual supply voltage to the main supply voltage, leading to the normal operation. For more about this, 
we encourage you to watch the other presentation that has been done by our colleagues which covers power gating in more details. Last but not the least, our example, an implemented design by Intel, where they apply a body bias on a test chip and monitor the chains. And as shown in the graph, when a zero body bias applied, they reduce the supply voltage from 1.35 to 1.28 volt, which decreases the dynamic power. But the performance will be slow. And here is the magic of applying a forward body bias when they operate on the reduced supply voltage. Look at the step up of the frequency here. It increased by 5% getting a higher performance while the dynamic power is still the same to balance the increment of the static power in the total consumption. Finally, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you could understand the topic with joy. If you have any question, please don't hesitate to contact us. See you in our next presentation.